are live. Welcome to TFYLP episode 326. I'm here with uh, Rick Alvarez and uh, Peter. <laughs> and like, greetings, my... people of Earth. Yeah, so uh, so we're uh, we're doing the show. Duran uh, decided to take a much needed uh, day off today, so he decided we to voted him off us. the island. Yep. So, so, so yeah. So for some reason, he decided to leave it to us. I'm not sure why, but uh, but yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll try and do do our best here. So, um, yeah. So th- this week we're doing uh, UK Transformers is going to be our uh, topic of the show, uh, and um, so we'll just try to cover all of the uh, you know various differences between the UK and US Transformers, uh, and uh, you know some of the the history or whatever uh, over there as well. So, and it's not going to be like the definitive end all be all difference. This is this is a podcast. There's only so much time available to, to cover stuff. So this is this is an overview for some people who who just don't know that much about it or don't know a whole lot about it. But if you do know something about it, uh, keep it to yourself. So uh, before we get into that, should we start off with Ouch My Wallet? I think we should. All right. Uh, okay, I guess I'll go first. Yeah, you, you go first. Yeah, I guess I'll go first. I was waiting for you guys, but I, I guess I'll go first. So um, this week's Ouch My, my Wallet, uh, I didn't really have a toy per se because I haven't been spending a lot of money on toys, but two big things happened in my life. I'm going to take you guys over here. First thing that happened in my life, as I continue my journey in my basement, look at that. See that case? And you see that case? Those are vintage Toys R Us cases. I had to track down a Toys R Us employee to come to my house to set them up because it was a horrible jigsaw puzzle. So I have... Toys R Us cases, and then that giant Last Night Optimus is going to go between them. It, it's very messy right now because I had to make a lot of space because the big thing in my life, and this was ouch my wallet because it was $220 just for labor. I had these giant seven-foot-tall uh, display cases in my garage for about a year. They're about 800 pounds each. I have two of them. And uh, I had to pay someone to help me. So they sent over four big guys plus me, and it was a pain in the butt. But we finally got them down. So this this will eventually be the heart of my display room. So that will be loose G1 in that case. In the black cases, I'm going to have my Generations toys because I I love Chug. And then uh, in this case, I don't don't know what's going to be in in here yet. I I have not decided – Maybe masterpiece. I don't know. I don't know. That's good. So that's that's what I'm dealing with right now. So yeah, it's, it's coming along really nice. It's um, sorry for the shaky cam. Uh, it's a process. I've been in this house three years now, so I've gotten more done in the last three months, I think, than I have in the last three years. Just because I want to park my cars in my garage because all my toys are in the garage. So um, if anyone needs any empty boxes, I'm going to have about 3,000 of them very Ooh. soon. Are any so, of them shipper cases? Uh, I'm going to keep all those ones. Okay. I'm going to keep right all answer. those ones. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm going to keep all the ones that say Hasbro samples enclosed. Huh. Um, property of, of uh, Paramount. Uh, I'm going to keep all those ones. So. Kind of- but if you need a box to move stuff in, please please come to my house and I will <laughs> I will give you a box to to move stuff in. Um, so Peter, do you do you have anything for for Ouch my wallet? I have nothing to show for my Ouch my wallet, but I I bought some some boxes. Now that we're on the, the subject of boxes, I got um with bubbles, uh, Generation One, Snap Trap, Brainstorm, and Grotesque. So I'll be able to take my loose figures and plop them in there and then I'll buy another set of loose figures and that way I can have both. Um, Other than that, I just recorded a video for my own dealio showing what I bought in the last month. I got some Generation 2 Rotor Force guys carded. 
uh, Star Scream Generation 2 sealed, uh, some train bot parts, uh, both Diaclone and Headmasters. Nice. And um, a couple other things, uh, Beast Machines, Rat Trap, and oh, yeah, now while we're on the subject, I should have brought him with me. Uh, I got a, a Quench in the box. Hey. Nice. He's over there. Yeah, I see him. That guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, speaking of Seacons. Yeah. Uh, it's That's crazy. Why... We're getting Generation Seacons from, exactly. from Takara. So, Everyone so says Takara, for... but it's actually Takara. <laughs> is Revage. that for real? Like, I, I saw the preview for that, and I'm, oh, I'm real. really excited. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like they're making the Megatron from the, uh, what is Battle that, Stars. from the manga? Yeah. Yeah, from Return of Convoy. Was yep. that it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, He's which is crazy. Super Megatron, Ultra Megatron, then he becomes Star Giant, combines with uh, Dark Nova to become Star Giant or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, you just see the silhouette of that cannon on his arm and, and you just know exactly. It's like, bang, did you ever think we'd live in a time where we not only would get, a, I mean, that's in a rare, that is an obscure G1 character. It is. It is, but it's. I'm so grateful. Like I found out about him back in the '90s, you know, and 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 it's it's so neat. Like you said, to live in a time where we are able to get that in toy form, however the avenue it's, it's coming. And not. I mean, it's it's going to be articulated. It's. I assume it's going to look good because Takara is doing. I mean, that Star Convoy looks really good, and that individual Prime has that G1 toy head, which a lot of people are saying it's Action Master, but it's not Action Master. It looks kind of action mastery. I don't know. Uh, if it can, you know what, I would give it to them if it came with an orange gun. Granted. But <laughs> it's got the it's got the vents on the face mask, which is just straight up G one. It's you gotta love it. You gotta love how convoy because in, I mean in Takara in their storyline, Power Master Prime, well, that was a different character. Right. So when Convoy returned, when Optimus Prime returned, he was that G one guy, and then he became Star Convoy. Right. So to have those two versions of that character in one toy, that that's very exciting for me. So it's gonna be fun. The the only thing that I don't like is is I, I wish that there was a little more remolding with the alt mode, um, because I already own two versions of that of that particular mold. So I'm, I'm still debating on whether or not I'm gonna get it, uh, but. I, I know. I, I feel like I'm probably nitpicking a little bit because, I mean, it does look fantastic. And I, I do love the remolding that they did do on it. Um, you know, I, I just wish it was a little further. But I understand why they, you know, did it the way so, they did it. So here's the thing, though. I mean, how often do you keep that stuff transformed into vehicle mode? Exactly. I mean, you're going to keep them in robot mode. Right? I mean, I'm looking at your display behind you. <laughs> it's It's going to be robot mode. Right. So no, you're right. You're right. So and how many third party guys have done a uh, star convoy? So we got one inbound, you know, so it's like, but that's, that's masterpiece. Right. Right. And this is generations. Exactly. So, yeah. So two you know, different it, displays, two different, two different uh, aesthetics. And I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for both. It's going to be great. They, they live in two different display cases for me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Lucas, did you, did you have um, anything for for your wallet? Um, or did... I, well, I was gonna say the. Uh, have you gotten the big powered yet? Uh, mine's sitting in my pile of loot somewhere. My, mine is in California at the moment. I'm in Massachusetts. Yeah. Did you get big powered? Not yet. I, I'm debating. That that's why I want to get. I, I want some more people to get it first to to give me their impressions before I decide to get it. Okay, let me log into my account right now. I'll have it shipped. It won't, right. be here. it won't so, even be here by the end of the show. But. So, so Christian, so, let me ask you this, Lucas. I, yeah. You know, I'm curious that you said that. Do you look at that repaint set, and it, it is it is remolded? Do you look at that repaint set as akin to like a Bakon set? That's something that someone at Bakon would have done, or because the the colors are drastically different from the original toys they were based on. Mm-hmm. So what what is your hesitation and and I'm, I'm not trying to, to judge you I'm so, just trying to like understand why why you're hesitant to pick up su such an awesome set. So so my hesitation. I mean, is, when have we ever gotten you know those three guys again? Oh, a absolutely, yeah. No, I mean I I understand that. Um, so for me, I don't have uh, you know I, I don't have to have every G one. Um, and so I I do enjoy them doing the remolds and and whatnot. 
uh, and, and bringing us care, you know, the, these types of characters. Um, it's just that I just, am not sure about the, the quality. Cause I know with the, uh, God Genrai set that, you know, the, the quality was, you know, a little so, so on it. And so that's what I'm worried about is that, I, I just want to make sure that the quality is good and everything like that before I decide to get it. So it's about quality, but all right, let me ask you about your display behind you. Mm -hmm. Is everything arranged according to a theme? A year of, is it year of released? Um, or, or is it by character? Like, the, the ones that I have, like, the one that you can see right behind me is, like, uh, my Takara stuff. So anything that I have that's their own Takara, like, I have that. I have War for Cybertron down lower. But, yeah, I mean, I, I typically try to arrange it uh, generally by, like, generations. I You know, that goes in an area, legend, stuff like that. So I don't have, like, a specific, like, here's my Japanese G1 shell for my, you know, whatever. But I do try to keep my G1 together, my G2 together, European stuff together, yeah. Is that the case for, like, your chug figures? That's what I'm yeah. trying to get at. I, right? keep, I keep all my chug uh, stuff together, yeah. Yeah. My chug stuff, I kind of keep in, uh, like, class portrait style displays where, you know, the 84... Should be, live, then. Should be live, then. Hey, we're sorry, everybody. We're we're experiencing some technical difficulties, um, in typical TFYLP tradition. Yeah. So uh, we'll edit these shows together for you. So yeah. feel free to leave uh, obnoxious and uh, rude comments towards us. Um, we can take it. We we appreciate them. It's the <laughs> yeah. internet. You got to have tough skin to be on the internet, man. You know, it's it's somehow that like literally I don't have any computer issues until the you know we, we start live on Facebook or on YouTube or whatever, and at that moment that's when everything crashes, right? I mean, it's just you know it's Murphy's law. Yeah. So. Yeah, Murphy's law. Good old RoboCop. <laughs> so okay, so I guess I think the point where I you know you guys cut out was. The part where we're talking about Star Convoy, and we're talking about Big Powered, and you big know powered. whether or not I should uh, get uh, get the Big Powered, and as far as like that my my background and my, my shelf and all that. So I guess Rick, I, I'm sure you probably had like about a five minute monologue going after that uh, about why I should. Yeah, get I it. basically I I said some pretty harsh things about you personally, <laughs> so okay. uh, it's a shame that 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 not did not get recorded for posterity uh so um I'll, I'll try and remember what it is that i said and i'll i'll just shoot you a message later okay so that okay. uh be, because my words need to be heard yeah and make sure not to leave yeah. anything back because i i didn't get any of that no the, i you know sometimes when you know autocorrect steps in but uh you know whenever it says duck just know it's supposed to say something else yeah so yeah. um so the one thing that I will say just in general is, is that I really do love these the Generation Selects products that they've done and the Dakar exclusives that they've done. And so a lot of, you know, my motivation, uh, you know, for some of these, besides the fact that they look really cool, um, is the, the fact that I do want to support this line and, I you know, I do want some type of, of uh, additional thing that they're doing, uh, you know, now that the, the club's no longer around. And, I mean, it seems like most of these releases are a little bit less expensive than the club just because, you know, Hasbro's making it directly or Chikara uh, directly. Well, they're, they're also making a lot more, you know, 5,000 versus 500 units, you know, so that right. that's, a, that's a big difference, too. So I think the next – I think we're getting Ricochet yep. just came out along with the red-chested red swoop. Uh, I still haven't gotten my Megatron, my G2 Megatron. Same. Oh, really? Um, but I did get notification from Pulse that my second wave of uh, Siege stuff is shipping, but they're shipping each figure in an individual box. So I got eight shipping yep. notifications with eight different tracking numbers. And it's like, yep. And they all didn't arrive. So I got like three deluxe figures two days ago. And in the mail today came another random deluxe figure. 
that's not a tenable shipping situation for them. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, they're all going to the same place. Just put them in the same box. Right. Yeah, I was kind of surprised with that, too. And I'm just wondering, like, my wife is going to be wondering what the heck's going on when I get, you know, whatever, 15 oh. boxes next week. And it's like, that's, God. that's like, where? It's I like, didn't even like, think about that. Dude, I ordered, I ordered 10 Gamorrean guards. And does that mean I'm going to get 10 boxes? Maybe. Jesus. <laughs> and the oh funny thing about God. it is, is all these things are like, what, 10 or $20 a piece, free shipping for us and all that. So, so yeah, it's like, it's, yeah. But You're going to have more shipping boxes to give away. I need to, I need, I need to just have like a convention where I give away boxes. Yeah. Or I set up at a convention. See, I'm just a lazy person in general. I should just set up at a convention and, oh, you need a box? Here's a. I'll sell you a box. It's a buck. Here's a box. Any box is a buck. I can make up. To, I I think I'll make up to five to ten dollars that day. So so for me, uh, so like I in, I try to hang on to like my Amazon boxes, uh, just to use them as, as shipping boxes. Like if I sell oh, yeah. something else or whatever, right? But it really irks my wife about that because I have an entire room with shipping supplies that she you know doesn't want me to have like she she honestly that makes her more upset than a room full of toys so well, I, I, that's understandable they're just boxes at this point it's not even toys that you can look at and have fun with this is just a tower i have the same thing a tower of boxes and packing peanuts and bubble wrap just waiting for my ebay stuff to push that way i can push it out but it never goes away completely it, but it got to the point where it wasn't sustainable for me where I was just, I just had trash bags full of like packing material, and not enough stuff leaving the house. It, but I, I know and inevitably, the EPA gets really mad when you burn that stuff too. Yeah, burning is not the best way to go. I don't like it when people come to my house and say, eh, "The smell! Stop burning styrofoam!" But I, I'm it's sure my, it's my as, house. As soon as I get rid of all that stuff, like the next week something will sell, and I would have to go and, you know, buy packing material. So I just keep holding on to it. But I'm sure I don't know if you guys have the same thing with like cords or whatever. Like I've got a box full of like HDMI cords and all that kind of stuff too. So if you have a box full of tumbler keys, I, I could definitely use one right now. I've been trying every tumbler key I could find. <sighs> All right, so should we get into tonight's uh, topic? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, why don't you Why don't you hit up the uh, sponsors first before we get into that? Oh man, now you're putting me on the spot. Keep you on your toes, baby. Um. So let's see. Uh, I'm gonna say I, ha I haven't written down just to just to make sure here. Um. So uh, our, our first sponsor is uh, CapturePrey.com. Um. Uh, great toys, great prices, great service. Uh, so you can save more with uh, free domestic shipping on any orders of $150 or more. And you've also had the benefit of the stasis pod, uh, which uh, is something where you can uh, stack your items together and then ship them out at a later time. Uh, and then also check out Ripped Apparel at RippedApparel.com and use the promo code TFYLPPOD, all caps, no spaces, on checkout to save 10% on your order. So, and that is it. And we have our Patreon. And also our Patreon. Right, so it costs a lot of money for us to have all these technical issues that we, we're trying to fix the technical issues, but that shit costs money, people. So if you uh, do our Patreon and if you guys like what we do, uh, you know, you can send Duran some some money directly, which goes to buying a new server, which we just bought. But obviously, it's at Duran's house, not Lucas's. Um, and if you do the highest tier, we uh, promise, I personally promise to send a leader class uh, Beast Machines Cheetor to Dom's house every time someone buys that. <laughs> and I will also mail you a copy of one of my books. And for an extra hundred bucks, I will sign it for you. And for an extra hundred bucks, I won't sign it for you. <laughs> so, um, do you, can can we try and 
uh, screen share stuff, or is that going to crash the system? Uh, screen sharing should work. I, I should have it set up with, uh, let me see here. You got your, so, you got your pictures here. So I just randomly pull, pulled some pictures together. That, you know, there's a lot of different websites I, I pulled them from. You're going to see from uh, places you know, uh, uh, you know, TFW, and, and I borrowed some from Matt. And then just, you know, thank you to everyone for letting me borrow your pictures. Um, we're not making money off that, so you know I, I don't feel too guilty. We're just borrowing pictures. All my stuff is still packed away. Big, Those are my stuff. All my loose stuff is packed away. So, um, all right, Lucas, whenever you're ready, sunshine. All right, so we should be screen sharing right now. So I've got a nice picture of some uh, yellow Constructicons here. All right, so, so well, you know, a lot of people don't realize that. Um, variations between what you would consider like American, like North and North America, Hasbro, Canada and Hasbro, uh, United States. Um, that's what I'll refer to as America. European stuff, uh, variation started in the eighties and we're, we're not quite sure what led to some of these variations. Uh, I have a theory about one in particular, but, uh, what we're looking at, these are yellow Constructicons. And they're not the G2 one. They're not even close to the G2 colored ones. These are yellow Constructicons, which came out in the 1980s um, in Europe. They're kind of like an orangey yellow. Uh, there was no difference other than the color. They, the packaging was still the same as the as the American packaging with the green Constructicons. Uh, they all still merged together. Uh, and th this is a pretty rare set. This is a pretty rare to have these. Uh, I believe the company was. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to say it without insulting them. Sagey or Sage. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce that company. So uh, it was C E I G I, I believe. Um, so they're the company that was used for distribution of these toys. I have no idea why they were yellow. Even the purple was uh, more like a bluish, grayish purple than the regular um, American release. You can definitely tell having them side by side and then having the G2 side by side just how different these were. Now, now, how does this differ from – wasn't there a set that uh, was made by Joustra? Is that the same company or is that different? Uh, well, French company? Yeah, so um, uh, Joustra uh, start off, uh, they're distributing the die clone stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they also, uh, at one point, they were distributing die clone stuff with Transformers products in the die clone stuff. That's how you get like carded gears and ravage with like on Joustra die clone cards with like Autobot and Septicon symbols on them. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't believe Joustra did these. Um, these came carded. Uh, Gigi or. Oh, gig. Gig. Thank yeah. you. Gig. See, that's why I write it all down because I can't remember it. So gig, they did put out the green construct cons in Europe, mm -hmm. but those came boxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they basically came in the uh, the, the Takara style with the styrofoam and everything and it said transformer and had the little gig logo and they looked pretty much like the car packaging uh but with the gig stuff on it right so it's an interesting variant they are tough to come by um i don't own any of these um but eventually they're they're going to be moved up on my on my hit list so uh we should move on um to our to our next guy uh, so a lot of people are familiar with this one. It's a red tracks. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the way this got produced, if you remember the back of the box in 1985, where it was that huge battle scene, there was a red tracks. It painted in that scene. Yep. Uh, no idea why this figure was done in that st why someone made a decision to say, hey, Trax in the Netherlands, he's going to be red with blue wings and weapons. 
no idea why, but um, it might have been derived from that painting, from that epic battle painting. So this is another rare piece. Um, it's since has been uh, called, uh, it's been retconned to be called Road Rage. Yep. And uh, has since been retconned even further to be a female character. So I believe the Bakan version was female and uh, and the Masterpiece version of Road Rage are, are female. Right. And the Masterpiece version has a little bit of uh, some tooling tweaks to slenderize, you know, and shows that, that feminine form a little bit more so than the tracks uh, mold. Right. Yeah, and like the hips area. Yep. So. so, Lucas, are these new to you or were you uh, familiar with some of these? Um, a few of those, uh, I am, I think as we get further on, um, you know, I actually have, uh, a few of the, the G1 1.5 ones that were Europe only. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, so, some of those, you know, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not quite, uh, to, to the level that you guys are as far as collecting, uh, you know, some of the variants and, and whatnot. Um, uh, but um, you know, I, I definitely, and then I also follow, uh, of course, uh, Maz on, uh, the Transformer Square One blog. Uh, he shows up mm-hmm. for quite a few variants and all that. So that, that's really where I've gotten a lot of my education, uh, yeah. you know, from that. Yeah. Yeah. Maz is a good guy. He's good people. Yep. Yep. So, um, moving on, uh, I think this, uh, next figure, this is Optimus Prime, but this is something that I think more people are familiar with. Uh, this is the red foot French version of Optimus Prime. So the first release, if I am correct, had the blue feet. And then a second release later came with the red feet. Uh, I believe this one also came with the, sometimes they're referred to as like the bubble or the bloated. bubbly bloated. fist. Bloated. Thank, oh, thank you. Again, that's why I write this down. I'm trying to do this off memory. So you have the um, the the bloated gun with the bloated fist, uh, with the bloated little piece for roller that fits on the back, and uh, this uh, Optimus uh, had that variant over there in Europe, if I'm correct. Mm-hmm. So this is a this is an incredibly hard variant to get. It was only available in France. Um, I think most people have have seen this. Uh, uh, all these have been featured in, in various books um, that I've done. So that's kind of like early G1 uh, variants. But then we get into G1 exclusive figures. Yep. And I think that's where most people are familiar with. Lucas, it sounds like, like this is like where, where the figures that you might collect or yep. might have seen pop up in Generations. Hey, how Absolutely. crazy would it be, Peter, if there was, like, a Chug Optimus with red feet? I would go that, for that. How come would, that hasn't happened yet? I don't know. Um, I could see that coming out. I mean, I, I in my mind's eye, I would see it coming out in, like, a Platinum Edition if they were still doing that. Or yeah. maybe SDCC with just funny feet release. That could be yeah. fun. I, I almost yeah, I feel that. like it would be a, a, a masterpiece, like, you know, one of the MP10s that they release you know, to, to give another variant of that. Somebody oh. photoshopped uh, the new Masterpiece Optimus uh, that hasn't come out yet with the G1 toy head and the G1 toy colors, and it looked amazing. Oh, yeah. But, you know, if you did a version where you gave that one the red feet, oh, oh, see, that's that's a reason for me to spend 450 bucks because <laughs> <laughs> I like my feet red. Yeah, and they've done uh, a great job. I know with with some of those like that mega that toy Megatron that they did is is great too. Yes, yes, that was another to- toy. I got it, opened it, looked at it, back in the box. It, it's lost somewhere in all of this <laughs> mess that I have here. So, all right, so let's move on to some Action Masters. So Action Masters. As that line was, as the Transformers line was ending in America, the line continued in the UK. Yeah, Action Masters only got the initial year, 1990, in the US. And then, yeah, go ahead. So in 1991, they saw uh, some new characters, some more G1 characters. Uh, some of these had been reworked concepts. So, like, uh, Omega Supreme had, was originally an Omega Supreme. Um, 
Trax was released in the UK as an action master. Originally, he was supposed to come with a boat that transformed. So they, they kind of scaled down. They didn't release any vehicles in the UK, uh, any little large vehicles. They released motorized vehicles, uh, which we didn't get in America. So we'll move on uh, to some of the figures. There's Power Flash. And what's unique about the UK Transformers is that in America, the Action Masters had an had a accessory that would convert into like a weapon. But it was very themed for the second year. So they had an accessory that would pop on to the head and shoulders of the figure, and that would activate a spring-loaded transformation. So it became like a battle helmet. So we started off with Power Flash, which I don't think there's been a Power Flash released since, there's right? There's been nothing. Nothing. Okay. So uh, then we went on to Sideswipe. And, of course, the, the ones that are actual G1 characters, I mean, they're all G1, but the ones that are, like, 84, 85 characters are always the more sought after and expensive. Uh, so we have Sideswipe. And then this is the Trax. Uh, the Trax uh, originally was going to come with a boat. Uh, the reason I know that is because I, I had the original design uh, in my office at Hasbro. And it showed the transforming boat. So it was like a speedboat. And then it would flip upside down. And then parts of the bottom of the boat would transform out. And then he'd, he'd be able to sit on that, um, I, I guess, it's battle barge. I don't, know. I don't know. So, Rick, just out of curiosity, some of these action masters that are you know incredibly hard to find, are they also pretty valuable or are they not? Because I know some of the European <laughs> variants that, that I have, like, I mean, in the grand scheme of things compared to, say, for example, like some of the Japanese stuff. Well, not everyone collects Action Masters. Uh, but for people who do, trying to get the Japanese, the, the UK ones is pretty tough and they can get pretty expensive. Especially I mean, at if one point, yeah, the carded Action Master elites at one point were like 1500 bucks. They've come down considerably since as more and more people have started selling them off. Uh, and they start switching hands more. Um, but it, it's still pretty expensive to get these carded. Now, uh, luckily, but, there's only four elites and six. Uh, six? Yeah, six, six regular, regular figures. Yeah. So uh, on the Decepticon side, we had uh, Bombshell, which was the only uh, 8045 character that looks to really... make it into the line. Yeah, that w was definitely... Uh, with Action Masters, they're all based more off the animation. But... With like Bombshell, I'm like man, they they did a really good job with that one. Uh, Charger, Charger, and um, Takeoff, I think are both characters that never came out anywhere else, right? Right. We Nothing. we haven't gotten any club versions of them or any uh, homages to them in in movie lines or in Chug. Nothing. So, uh, and then we get into um, our figures that came with. Uh, the Rumblers. Was that what they were called? No, that's the name of one character. That was the name of the character, right. What, what were they called? The, what was the... I have the boxes just, right here. They were just vehicles. There was uh, yeah. Rumbler, Slicer, uh, Thundercracker, and... Help me out. Star... Uh, no. There's Thundercracker, Slicer... Slice, yeah. Slicer... Uh, Circuit. Circuit, thank you. Circuit, yeah. So this hey, is Circuit. Right up there, yeah. Yeah, so that's Circuit. So Circuit, we actually did one for Bacon. Mm -hmm. We did a Circuit from the... Um, was it Reveal the Shield Lockdown? We did a new head for it. Yeah. Uh, Thundercracker. So uh, Thundercracker, this one is actually a repaint of the American Action Master for Starscream. However, uh, while I worked at Hasbro, I found that originally Thundercracker was to have an all-new tooling... And he was going to have the wings come out the side. So Thundercracker was all new. There was Gnaw, Hound, Blur, uh, about eight or ten new characters. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people have seen uh, Superion. And Predaking. Um, Predaking. And, uh, oh, uh, Cliffjumper. And Cliffjumper was an all new as well. And so, oh, that was the other one, Blue Streak. Blue Streak was also all new. He was not a repaint of Prowl. Hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, those designs are all lost now. 
Um, so we have Rumbler. So these were like vehicles uh, that had motorized action and basically uh, the weapons that were attached to the wheel, which are very fragile Ridiculously. and break very easily. Yep. Uh, those would spin around, and then you would stand it up, and the character would kind of... It would kind of be like an exosuit type thing, and then the weapons would spin again. And uh, Wheeljack, or Slicer. So this was a... Uh, this is, I think, the most popular Yeah. out of all of them. Um, it's certainly the one character that's gotten the most uh, homages to it throughout he's, history. Yeah, he's kind of like a Dark Beast, right, from X-Men? yeah. Yeah, he's just uh, he's just a straight up wheeljack repaint, but he's just a Decepticon. And there's all there's always uh, we're still waiting on that from uh, Masterpiece. I think it'll happen eventually. I hope so. Oh yeah, uh, that would be great. So you then know, we go on. Go ahead, I was, Lucas. I, I was just gonna say real quick. I, I'm really curious if they release some of these to retail, how well they would do, just like with all the bright colors and everything. If kids would actually, you know be into them well re remember this is like 1991 so what was happening in 1991 it, it's what i call the south florida era because it's like calle ocho from from miami it's all bright colors it's neon it's pastel it's just all bright colors and that was just like the trend across the toy industry and if you look at probably the most popular toy line of 1991 was ninja turtles if you look at the, li the line from that year it was all bright colors to try and get people's attention all eye offending colors yeah so uh omega supreme the action master elites were action masters that transformed which kind of defeated the purpose of what an action master was right. so omega Supre omega supreme the design was the same from the original concept that i had at hasbro uh, and on the concept, it said Omega Supreme on it. So somewhere, someone along the line, not just not only changed the color, but they also misspelled it or purposely changed it to be Supreme. On the actual original concept, it says Omega Supreme on it. Now, I've read somewhere, it might have been on the wiki, that, it, that the Supreme to Supreme was due to a translation into Japanese and then back into English, and it just kind of got jumbled up. I, Grain it's salt, possible. It's it's certainly possible. Uh, I don't know why or or how the colors ended up like that or how the name ended up like that. Uh, it could be like uh, another situation where like you see uh, uh, what was the G1 reissue? Was it Inferno or or Hoist that had the name spelled wrong on the box for the TRU reissues? Oh, um, so mistakes happen. Yeah. So then there was uh, Windmill. Uh, Windmill is another character. We haven't seen an homage to him anywhere. He's an uh, interesting mold. Yeah, the, I mean, the transformation certainly is, is <sighs> unique. They, they had what was interesting about the elites. They not only transformed, but they also had like uh, this little uh, peg you'd push in and it would, it would like rotate something, would activate something. So with Windmill, uh, it would activate the uh, the blades of the helicopter mode. And, and then Double Punch, which I think is the most popular of all four elites. Uh, I don't think I actually found um, his original design while I was at Hasbro, so I can't I can't confirm it was supposed to be Scorponok or not. By looking at him, you know it's supposed yeah. to be Scorponok. It's Black Zarac. I don't know, man. It does have it does have that head on it. Yep, that's it, it a... definitely has the head. Yeah. So double punch uh, has been homaged. Uh, we do have our chug figure uh, made from the Energon Scorponok, yep. which I think came out wonderful. It's beautiful. And then uh, finally we have uh, Turbo Master, which was Bruticus. In the original design, it actually was Bruticus, where it looked like it was a combiner. And then it was changed uh, to have the limbs uh, be more uniform. But if you look at the head and you look at the torso, uh, you could tell that's our that's Bruticus. Yeah. Uh, and then um, we move on to our uh, um, motivators. Before we move on to the motivators, I just want to take a second. Uh, I used to be 
uh, subscribe to a periodical called Toy Trader. And around 92, 93, it was like a like a big newspaper size thing I got every month. Um, around 92 or 93, I was flipping through and there were all these ads from just local, well, nationwide, U.S. Uh, based dealers. And they had an ad in there for Transformers. And I laughed and laughed because this ad said, you know, I'm 13, 14 years old. And uh, the ad says Action Masters, and it said Omega Supreme, and I laughed at it because they misspelled Supreme. Who these stupid people don't know what they're talking about? Uh, you know, Windmill. I've never heard of that guy. What is all this junk? This, this whoever this dealer is has no idea what he's talking about. And it was just a little ad. They were twenty bucks a piece, oh. and I blew it. I blew it off. Thought it was a joke. Thought it was just someone completely mistaken about what they yeah. had, and that was that. And I didn't hear about him again until I got on the internet years later. And was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I still have, I tried to find it before the show. Uh, I still have all my toy traders, but I can't find that ad. I couldn't find it just my quick. Unfortunately, we all have stories like that. Yeah. It's very sad. We all have stories like that. So the motivators. Um, Peter, why don't you give us a breakdown of where these originally came from? Okay, so the motivators are, are fun uh, reissue of molds that were used originally in 1989 for the Japanese Victory Series. Uh, it's three sports car, well, two sports cars and a, and a dune buggy. And uh, originally in Japan, they were blacker, laster, and braver. And they combined to form a dude called Road Caesar. They had swords and shields, and they had the, the Brain Master gimmick, wherein a small figure would be inserted in the chest, and as you close the chest plate, it inserts, well, makes the, the figure's face and brain rise up into their head module. So... They were. It, it was the next evolution of like headmasters, headmaster. and power masters. Exactly. Um, so fun toys, kind of a clunky uh, combiner mode, but still fun. I love that. I love that set. Um, so they were ported over to uh, the European market, uh, and we've got pictures coming up. The names were yeah. changed. It was Gripper, Lightspeed, and Flame. Flame. Thank you. Yeah. But and, these did not have the pieces to connect them. Uh, to to assemble them like Road Caesar. And I don't think, I think the molds were different. So you, even if you had the parts, you couldn't connect them. Uh, I don't know about the molds being different. That might be the case. I'm not sure. Um, I, I mean, I want to say that well, that's the case. Um, but my, mine are all in the package, so I, yeah. I never compared them. But the fun thing about these is you can still stack them up and combine them. And I, I don't remember where it might have been a Dutch coloring book or some sort of a, uh, continental European book, coloring book, activity book, sticker book of some kind. It it it, it showed someone made a I don't know. He showed up. Uh, Rescue Force showed up. We'll get to that. And and the motivator, the big motivator, showed up. Minus all of his junk, he just looked broken and clunky. <laughs> but it's canon somewhere. Uh, canon is uh, arbitrary. Um, so probably the most popular UK character there is, is the one and only Thunderclash. Uh, Thunderclash has had a great run in the IDW comics. Um, he was, he was in the Lost Light books, uh, wonderfully written. Uh, I really enjoyed, uh, the way they portrayed his character there. Uh, we did a Thunderclash for Bacon, um, but I'm, uh, super psyched that I was able to get one uh, from uh, was it MMC or Ma it was Mastermind yeah, Creations. Yeah. That's one. They did a great job with it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So Thunderclash was the figure that this figure was uh, uh, brought over minus the missiles and the a little gun uh, and used as Machine Wars Optimus Prime for the KB exclusive toy line. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. So, so it's probably the easiest way to get them. In the U.S., but there are a lot of Thunder Clashes. Like, I mean, if you go to cons and everything, I, I, I typically see like at least one Thunder Clash at every like TF Con. Yeah, I think, uh, and this is how old I am. I'm going to be 40 in two weeks, but this is how old I am. I got my Thunder Clash sealed in the box. I paid 100 bucks for it back in the day. Hmm. So uh, Thunder Clash, uh, he was the first Optimus Prime toy to come with a face, right? Uh, yeah. Or unless you count the G2 go, the go bots. bots. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So there you go. So a lot of these figures, they were called power masters, uh, in Japan, uh, in the UK, they didn't have the power master gimmick that we associate with the name power master. Turbo masters. 
Uh, oh, they were Turbo Masters, right? Yeah. That's right. Who were the Power Masters? That was the – oh, that was the little cars. That was the little pullback cars? Yeah. That for yeah, Gen okay. Two. Thank that's you for like, correcting me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I – you know, that's why I write shit down. So uh, <laughs> Rotorstorm became uh, Sandstorm in oh. Machine Wars. And, uh, again, from the UK version to the – this was a toy. It was not released in Japan. It was not released in America. This is a UK toy. Uh, and the time – he both times he was released in America as part of uh, Machine Wars and as part of his universe, uh, he, he was missing the missiles. For some reason, they just didn't bring over the missiles with those guys. Uh, and then we move on to Boss. Uh these are uh, the additional Turbo Masters. There was Boss, there was a Flash, Hurricane, and Fire Road. And I think we, we've done a Fire Road for Bakan. Fire Road was his Japanese name. Uh, Fire, okay. So these did come out in Japan, and these came out in, uh, they were two packs, right? Yep. With the Predators. Yep. And they came out in the Operation Combination series, the same time as Battle Gaia and Card City. Right. So a lot of people say, well, these G2, no, I consider these, these are, I consider these G1 figures. I mean, technically, the, yeah, they all came out before G2, right? I mean, G2 yeah. hadn't been in the so, U.S. yet, so I, I mean. Yeah, I, these, I, are the, I, these are the ones that get called G1.5, if you're going to, yeah. if you're going to yeah. put a name on it. Um, yeah. And also around the same time, just going real quick back to the motivators, Overlord is prominent on the back of that box art. So Overlord from Japan from 1988's Master Force got a, a, a European UK release, right? And uh, slight color tweak in that purple, a little bit. Yeah, uh, but other than I think that, it came out in Australia as well, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so yeah, so th these are more like the exclusive. Th I completely forgot that these actually came out in those two packs with the Predators. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I even have one or two of those. I, I just com completely forgot. Um, Skyquake. So Skyquake, Skyquake was a character that I'm like, you know what? We need a guy who's like a seeker, who's like big and strong, and, and like the Lugnut version of a seeker. So like I was thinking like Lugnut from Animated, and that's why in Transformers Prime we had Skyquake, uh, because I just I wanted to reinvent that character. Unfortunately, they killed him off after one episode, <laughs> which I wasn't prepared for. I'm like, yeah, we need Skyquake in the show. We need to we need to make this guy a thing, and he should have a British accent, which they didn't do either. But um, Skyquake finally made it onto a television series. Uh, unfortunately, he was killed and, and then came back for one episode of Zombie Skyquake. Uh, but Skyquake was uh, Machine Wars Starscream. Uh, and again, he didn't come with the uh, gun uh, for the U.S. release, but he did come with the missiles. came with a big pile of missiles, and the missiles came in two different color variants. There's the green ones, and I think they were white. It was the uh, harder-to-find set. Oh, I didn't know that. That is wow! I didn't know that. Damn it! Now I need to go. Well, They're I know what I'm doing later on eBay. <laughs> so I'll be looking. I'll be looking for those white missile ones. <laughs> the, the so one you can't I tell in the package about the variant. No, uh, it's got to be opened. You got to open it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> that's the that's the tricky part. That's, so. that's tough. Oh, do you, Peter? Do you want to talk about the the mechanism between the predators? Oh yeah, the, the the visor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's I think it was called the mega visor. I could be wrong, but the the predators uh, were were four small jets, and uh, the two larger predator figures, it's uh, Skyquake and uh, Stalker. Stalker. Yeah, they it was machine war sound wave. Exactly. They came with. Uh, it was built into Skyquake's back, and Lucas can show that off. Um, and Stalker had it built into his missile. You could like mount. Little... Don't. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't push. Don't attach anything to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I, I was going to say one, one thing about these guys who I was going to bring up is every single one of these almost has some type of gold plastic on it. Um, and so yes. it, this is the thing that's unfortunate of a lot of their guns and a lot of the ones that I have are broken somewhere or they have a gun that's broken or they don't have the gun because it disintegrated, um, yeah. it, whatever. So yeah, so th this particular version is, does have, uh, some uh, cracks or whatever on on it too. I, I, I didn't pay a, a ridiculous amount for this or anything like that. I actually, the um, the eBay seller I got it from 
didn't say they had cracks and then I got it and I'm like, what, what is this guy? Um, and so yeah, he, he you, gave me a, a big partial refund for the fact that it, the gold plastic was cracked. So yeah, you look at them wrong and they break. Yeah. They're like electro from G2. It just, that's a fact, same material, but you, you would take the smaller predator figures and you would attach them to the, the, the mega visor on stalker and skyquake. And then you could look through the visor and it would show like a little battle scene or something. And, um, yeah, basically the, the it's problem. It's like a viewfinder. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It was like a viewfinder built in. Yep. So, um, Stalker, uh, he was reused without his gun for, uh, and without his little missiles, uh, for, um, Machine Wars, uh, Soundwave. He did come with the satellite dish, the little antenna dish. Yep. That fits on his shoulders. Um, now what's interesting is that, uh, the Predators, uh, there, there was Falcon, Skydive, Snare, Talon, right? Yeah. Good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Those guys, the artwork for them was used on Machine Wars. Sure was. But the With, figures didn't come out. Right. There were some tweaks to change the heads and faces and colors or whatever, but yeah, yeah. that was the Predator art on Machine so, Wars box. So they like, uh, I didn't have Photoshop back in 1995, but they... They altered the original box arts to make them look like inspired by the Machine Wars figures. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, these came on giant cards too. They were uh, the they were the Beast Wars size cards, and all the Beast Wars cards were really big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For some reason in the UK, you got really big backer cards for figures. Oh yeah, yeah. So they don't they don't ship well. Uh, they don't <laughs> they don't ship well when you put them in your luggage and trying to put your clothes between them. So. Um, so there were four predators. Um, again, you got the, what I call the South Florida colors yep. on these guys. Uh, and then, uh, real quick, uh, we're, we're running short on time. We're going to move on to these guys. Um, rescue force who they really don't have names for these guys. Rescue force uh, buggy, rescue force jet, rescue force drill and rescue force claw thingy. Yeah. So, um, these have been showing up uh, a lot lately in the last 10 years, uh, carded in the U.S., and unpunched even. So, like, I, I have a set that's carded uh, and unpunched, uh, and I, I think I paid $10 a piece for these uh, about 10 years ago. Um, so these were from uh, – these are reused from uh, the uh, – Breast Force. Le- Leo, yes, the Breast Force characters that formed Leo Kaiser. Uh, but only four out of the six were used, and this is this is where I got confused. You know, we were talking about Roach Caesar and how those guys can merge. These were the guys that couldn't merge, right? Or yeah. maybe they could. They they could, but they're missing both the arms. The head didn't come with it. It's just a big clunky mess. And that was also shown uh, as big rescue force in that coloring book I was mentioning a while ago. Big rescue force. It I like that ridiculous. name. Oh, it's a fun like name, it. but I like the figure name. itself is awful. Yeah, I think we actually have a picture of them of combined. Yeah, we oh, yeah? do. I'm, I'm showing it right now. Okay. Um, so then we move on to other figures that that were exclusive. Um, these didn't come out in Japan. Hey, hey I, real quick, I uh, Rick, yeah. uh, one of the viewers had a question and said, uh, what do you know about the early 90s UK Hong Kong releases? I've got a carded G1 normal painted ram horn and steel jaw with blue paint details. Never seen it since I bought the, it two decades ago. Do you know anything about that? Uh, so I don't know anything about that specific variant um in the early 1990s a lot of people go back and forth on whether these are official or not but these were official um a lot of transformers got reissued and reissued in the japanese uh, reissued in the american packaging the original 1980s packaging and most of the time so for example i have this i have this carded figure here up in uh the corner there'd be a little japanese sticker you know what they were Chinese. They were Chinese. Chinese, ones. yes. Hang on. Now they're still packed away. I got the aerial bots. But they look just like the 1985 figures, but they got a little – you got a little kanji up here. Uh-huh. Right? A little Chinese kanji up here. Uh, but they, they were official – figures yeah and you can find those on ebay and stuff and you'll see some of them still have a little sticker on on the top right and some people will peel it off and you can see a little rough spot 
where people are trying to pass it off as an official 84 release, but right. it's actually the 90 or 91 Chinese reissue. Right. So, so. you have to be careful. So I haven't seen yeah. pictures of uh, of a variant on the Ram. I would love – please post a picture of that Ram horn. Yes. Uh, I would love to see the variant on that. I, I really would. Um, and I'm curious, is it if it's the chrome? Maybe like the chrome has, has faded and it's blue plastic underneath, which that is still could. a valid variant. But um, yeah, I, I really want to see that that Ram horn. Yeah, so, um, yeah. so so we'll wrap up uh, with uh, we got Pyro and Clench and uh, Pyro and Clench um, both made it into Bacon sets um, Pyro and Clench these were called the Obliterators um, they were released uh, twice in the UK the first time they were released as Pyro and Clench the second time they didn't have names they were just called the Obliterators and they came in generation 2 boxes which are you know you can see those right here um, both fragile GPS, of mm. course, um, uh, pyro more so, uh, but these didn't come out in Japan. They didn't come out in America. Uh, so they are tough to come by, um, especially I with all their missiles and their guns. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The missiles are hard to find for both of them. And Clint, I'm sorry, pyro, he has gold feet, gold crotch, gold gun, gold Gatling cannon. Everything is uh, just don't. Don't breathe on him. He's um, the I, Electro of uh, yeah. the UK. And uh, their Gen 2 names, they did have names. I don't know if it's actually on the packaging, but it's, I know it's on the instruction book because it's Colossus and Spark. Oh. Oh, you're right. Yeah, on the back it says Colossus. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because we called him Spark in the Bacon set. Pyro right. Ignatius Spark, I think, was his uh, full name right. in the Bacon set. Right. That's right. Man, that's, it's, it mention, feels like a million years ago for me. I, I was going to mention, too, that those Bakon uh, figures are actually really good. Um, the, uh, I think the Pyro was a, uh, a repaint of, in, of the Generations Inferno, right? Yeah, I think it was uh, Inferno with... Then, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just a straight repaint, right? And then and then Clinch, I think, was a repaint of the... Um, Onslaught. Onslaught, Onslaught yeah. but he had a new head. The head was yeah, awesome on that. The head was... He and a, that's my... That toy is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, love yeah. The, I love the way the head came out. So, I, yeah, personally, I would say that those are the two best versions of, of that mold. Um, yeah, I wouldn't disagree. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was one thing cool about I don't. it wasn't on the Bacon box, but if you bought the poster, which was um, uh, Clench, the Bacon poster, it, if you brought a nightlight to it, it would show you other things. Like other explosions in the background and stuff like that. If you brought oh, a black light, it was like a yellow poster. But then you know you hit it with the nightlight, and I don't think we ever advertised it as um, cooler than it actually was. Um, so we'll we'll wrap up. Uh, these were the Power Masters, right? These are no. the Power Masters. Are yeah, yeah, first. yeah. So uh, fi- you know you get this is where uh, Iron Fist Fizzytron comes from. We couldn't call a character Iron Fist because of the Marvel character, so he became Fizzytron, uh, inspired by the comic books. Wait, wait, time out. Sorry, the Power Masters are the ones with the pullback gimmick. That's Iron Knight, oh, right, Bullet right, Bike. Right, yeah, right, right. the ones, uh, the the Fizzitron and 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 Fear Swoop and those guys. Those are the yeah. Light Formers and the Trackons. Right. Jesus. God, that's why somebody should write a book. <laughs> um, I I don't even have any of. I don't have my. Uh, international transformers book anywhere near here i would i wish i would have had something i brought something with me but because yeah there, there was a fierce swoop uh deft wing calcar uh, calcar and iron fist, iron the, fist right yeah, and two. iron fist is definitely the most uh popular one. Oh, absolutely um yeah. so uh you can make the argument are they g1.5 are they g2 uh these guys did come out in g2 packaging as well uh just like the pyro and the clench and uh, there's, there's, I think, a whole bunch of variants on how these guys came packaged in, G, in with, G2. Yeah, and with different names and stuff. They, it's, yeah. Yeah, I know. I only, I only have, uh, I think I have just the Kyle Car and Iron Fist carded. I don't. I don't have I don't any remember. of the carded versions. I have the, I have them boxed. The, the 1.5 versions. Um, yeah. Some guys that didn't make it in there are uh, these guys. Um, these are the uh, Spark Bots. Um, so these guys have been repainted a million times. You know, you've, we got them in different colors in Japan. We got them in the U- in America, and uh, in the UK they put out only two out of three. Um, 
they made some of the bots. they made two of the fire cons too yeah they only made two of the fire cons which is why we made one one of the fire cons for bakton yeah you used uh Cinder Sword for bakton uh, yeah from um megatron yep but we never did the other spark bot it seems like that would have been stupid struggle. now that we didn't do that we didn't do it um so uh so that that's just you know it's not a definitive uh breakdown but it's it's i think a very good overview for anyone who's looking to trying to get into the, to the uk transformers or just trying to understand them better um if you're listening to the audio version please do check out the youtube version where we have visuals of all this stuff there that we talk about plus you can wanna, see our, our very handsome faces i want to do a, a just real quick um in addition to the toys there was a big uh, disparity uh for what was going on with the comic books in uh, in the uk and they had a, a a whole bunch, a whole bunch more stories, uh, mostly written, you know, written by Simon Furman that 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 filled in the gaps uh, of the U.S. Uh, series, and they also had really uh, fun animated uh, Grimlock and Soundwave and Dreadwind were running the letters pages, and they would actually, you know, they would interact with uh, with the the fleshlings that would write into the comic book. And I just want to show off real quick. I've got uh, a letter from Dreadwind. Uh, as a response to someone who wrote into the comic book back in the 80s and uh it's it's on marvel you know copy paper and it's you know it's actually i don't know it's it's it's, it's it says dear hume uh it seems that you've been lucky enough to to get your letter printed in transformers not only does this give you the incredible feeling of elation uh from actually getting in print but you're also the proud owner of a new transformer toy which you know i guess they were sending out toys as a thank you for people that were uh, getting their letters printed this will undoubtedly give you hours of pleasure and stuff like that. Personally, I can't see why uh, I go to all this trouble for all you feeble fleshlings, but I suppose it's because I'm such a great guy. Enjoy. And then it's signed Dreadwind. So is that is that the actual letter this that the person actual, received? Yep. I got wow, this. Wow, that, that is something. I don't have anything like that in my collection. That is I, really cool. That's, that's, a, that's the centerpiece of my – like I have pretty much everything you're displaying there, Rick, and then some other stuff. And, and all my stuff is packed away, of course. Uh, but this is like – I've never seen another one of these, and I love it. That's really cool. That that's that's a very cool thing. Who was it that? Gosh, was it Simon Furman or Bob Budiansky? Somebody said they had a letter from Stan Lee saying, "Hey, what a great writer you are. I, I really look forward to seeing your." Maybe it was Simon. I think it was Simon. Yeah, he he mentioned that at a convention somewhere. Yeah. So uh, so thanks for dealing with our uh, technical issues. The the UK. Uh, versus uh, American comics. That's a whole other show. Yeah. That, that's, oh, yeah. that's really a whole other show. I would love to be on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that might just be the Pete and Rick show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so let me ask you guys though, too, um, you know, if, if someone wanted to get into these and, and saw some of the, you know, the pictures we had shown off and was like, man, I want to start collecting this. What do you think is the best way to, to start picking up some of these figures? Uh, I would say get involved in some of the groups on Facebook. There's there are British collector groups and other groups that you know where you can where they've got you know uh, European and British based members and you can just talk to them or you can just go on the the UK eBay site. It's eBay.co.uk and the, all that stuff is in there. It's not yeah. a lot of it. A lot of it doesn't get listed on the US site. So if you go over there, you'll find stuff not only more readily available but a lot cheaper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's kind of funny, too, because, you know, a lot of these, since they came out in Europe, you know, that like, that's just their toys. And so they don't really think of them as rare. Um, and I know, I think some of these, did they come out in Canada as well, uh, in addition to Europe? Some of I these, think, or were they all Europe? I think we, did, we didn't mention them, but there were the G1.5 Constructicons without the combiner bits. I think those were released in Canada and maybe Mexico oh. as well, the yellow ones. They were... Mm -hmm. There are a few different because I have a couple different samples with uh, different hang tag cuts in them, whether it's the the little butterfly punch or the hook type. Uh, so that kind of denotes where they were produced. Uh, but they're all in, they're all multilingual packaging, so it's weird stuff. Yeah. But any information that anyone, any viewers or listeners might have to help us clarify that would be appreciated. Yeah. And I, I know uh, I myself, I've picked up a lot of mine from eBay. I've also picked up some uh, some from various auctions, uh, like you had said as well. I think the, the biggest thing that you want to be careful with, like with a lot of these, is one, is make sure to ask a lot of questions about the condition if you're buying online. Because, again, a lot of these have gold plastic in them. And so make sure 
to ask ahead of time. Don't just rely on a couple pictures on the eBay listing and whatnot. A lot of the groups are a lot better about actually spelling out the condition explicitly, but a lot of people don't do that uh, in Europe. And some of the people on eBay too don't even know what they have. Uh, sometimes it's like, it's a dealer from Europe and they're like, yeah, I don't know. I, someone dropped this off at my store and, and, and here it is. So be careful with that. The other thing too is, is to do your research as well, that um, with any of these figures that are harder to find, be happy with the condition that they're in because it is very hard to find accessories for these figures. So like if you're buying it without the missiles or without the, the guns and stuff like that, it could take you 10 years to find yeah. the accessories. Those action masters that, that's why I don't mess with that, man. I either buy them complete or I buy an extra one carded that I just open. Right. And, and I know like myself, like I bought a lot of these to where they may not be a hundred percent complete, but it's 20 bucks. So it's like, I just want to enjoy the mold and, and, you know, mess with it and, if it breaks, it breaks, not a big deal or whatever, but just be aware with that and be happy because let me tell you, you're never going to find like, I, not to say never, but it's, it's incredibly gonna, difficult. It's mm-hmm. hard to find and you're going to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 A lot of times those accessories are maybe more than the figure itself. Right um, now there's a windmill carded uh, from Greece. I think the seller's in Greece and it's $1,400 like on one of the eBay sites. So yeah, these things, when they come up, they're not cheap. Yeah. So, but that's why I love it so much. There's always a hunt. There's always Mm -hmm. something for me to collect. Yep. Yeah. And, And I know even for me, you know, like some of these figures where, you know, I might only pay 50 to a hundred dollars on, on some of this stuff where I'm not necessarily getting the carded version. Uh, but it's really great to have a loose collection. And again, it's really like, I'm not necessarily paying $1,400 on it. I might only pay a little bit, but it's really hard to find. And so that's what, like, I know, like when I went to TFCon this last year that, uh, you know, one of the guys had a bunch of G G2 European stuff and G 1.5. And I was like, I will take it all just here, Pat, like make me a deal. <laughs> like what, what do I need to do to, to get all this stuff? Just because again, like, you know, going to conventions, it's like, y- you might not see it, forever or in the groups that you know a lot of times the stuff comes up like once a year maybe uh, yeah. or whatever so but rather than wait to to see them come up it doesn't hurt to ask it never hurts to ask yep all right guys well let's uh let's wrap it up um we'll we'll piece these together these episodes as we we did get interrupted uh unfortunately so um thank you all for uh tuning in and please remember our sponsors and our patreon and um Final thoughts, uh, I think we covered them already. Do your research. Um, Spend money, capitalism. (laughs) Um, Send me money. So, all right, guys. um, Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, everyone.